Well, Razorback fans, it's officially over. The Razorback basketball season comes to an end. So let's talk about what went wrong here on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. We're new customers. Join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Friday. Getting ready for the weekend. I know Razorback Baseball is going to be kicking off in SEC play, which we'll talk about. Uh, there was some spring practice, but nothing real t- too significant. But I wanted to kind of pay this as the final goodbye to the Razorback basketball season of 2023 and 2024. Uh, they officially lost to South Carolina, the Gamecocks, roughly about 20 points. And as far as what happened in that game, I, you know, there really wasn't anything much to discuss. I mean, it was just a poor performance. Uh, turnovers, bad shot selection, South Carolina being just a more physical team. It is what it is. It's over with. It's done. And so now it's kind of just in a lot big question. We'll talk about next season and moving into the offseason. But I, I simply wanted to ask the question to everybody is just get your own opinions because I'm going to give mine of what went wrong this basketball season. Now, I know that there were always going to be expectations no matter what when it's an Eric Musselman coach team. We all knew that. And going into this past offseason and even into this season, the expectations were at a fever pitch. And if you think that it was just of the the Homer fanboy Arkansas media and all of that, well, then you weren't paying attention because, as was pointed out by Freezing Cold Takes, Fox Sports and John Fanta of the Field of 68 podcast, before the season started, he picked the Arkansas Razorbacks to win the national championship. All right? A lot of people picked Arkansas to go to the Final Four, at least. Some even picked them to win the SEC. And this is outside the state of Arkansas. So spare me with all that, all, you know, the Homer uh, local media uh, just overhyped it. It had nothing to do with that. There were respectable and credible national college basketball writers and experts who had picked this team to be an outstanding team and in some cases even win a national championship, like that caliber team. And then when the preseason game or the exhibition game happened against Purdue, it just certainly felt like, man, this, this team's got it. You know, they, this is the worst they're going to be. They found a way to beat Purdue, who's a preseason number one team in the country, had the player of the year, reigning player of the year, Zach Eady back. And they fought tooth and nail to the very end, and they got the dub. It felt like at that point in time that it was meant to be, that there were, the hype was real. And I was believing it. And then the season, it got going. And, you know, it wasn't perfect at times. It wasn't perfect. But it certainly just felt like the expectation was still there. The good vibes, the good feeling was still there. There were times where you may have had some questions about the way things were handled or the questions about how someone played out and how how someone looked in a certain situation, but you started the season fine. But then you played UNC Greensboro in the the fourth game and lost it at home, 78 to 72. And suddenly there was a lot of questions being raised. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. What happened here? Well, my viewpoint at the time was like, well, you know, that sometimes you just have a bad game. You know, sometimes you have a bad game. Sometimes it just be like that. Sometimes you got you to gotta come back and bounce forward and uh, get humbled a little bit because maybe Arkansas is feeling themselves. Maybe they're still trying to figure things out. Maybe it's just a bad game because, as we know, in even previous seasons, Arkansas started the season at times barely scraping by some quality opponents, some quality non-conference opponents. So after that happened, I was like, Ooh, okay, well, let's see how they bounce back. Then they played Stanford and Maui that went to double overtime. And it was like, Ooh, I don't know. It's still, it's still figuring things out. It's okay. still figuring things out. But they got the win. That's what matters the most. They got the win. Then they played Memphis. 
tough. Memphis ended up winning. And then they got beat pretty handily by North Carolina. They went one and two in Maui, but they didn't have Tremont Mark. And I was like, boy, how's this going to go? Because you got Duke coming to town. You know, Duke, a top 10 team. Uh, you know, you, you have a quick turnaround. How's that going to work out? Well, you beat Duke. You stormed the court. And you did without Tremont Mark. And I, and I remember vividly at that time, I'm like, okay, so now, now, this is when the turn is going to start happening. They played Furman, ended up beating them. And then they go all to Tulsa and Oklahoma and they lose that game. And I just start thinking, in the way that they lost, I was like, something's off here. There's a lot of inconsistency. There's a lot of weird vibes. And I can't put I could not put my finger on it. And they barely beat Lipscomb and Little Rock. I was like, okay, but they won and Abilene Christian, UNC Wilmington. It's like they start getting things going. I was like, okay, so you know, let's see what they do in conference play. Because they got Auburn at home, and Auburn's a good team. What are they going to do? Well, they got housed by 32 points at home. And that's when I started thinking, oh, no. This is more than just a simple struggling to get out of the gate or struggling in the beginning of conference play. This, is, this might be something bigger. And then they lost to Georgia on the road. Then they lost to Florida on the road. And they were getting beat handedly in these games. And I was like, okay, like this was my last field. This was my last straw in all of it. Maybe it's like it has been before. <laughs> As I sneeze right there, that was the worst time for sneezing. That My face probably looked terrible now. <laughs> um, but it was like the worst timing of having that 0-3 start because of the way you lost. And then you have Texas A&M at home. You had a big lead in that game, by, lead, leading by 20 points in the second half. And then you blew the lead, but then you still got the victory because Tremont Mark had a game winner. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, the resiliency, the toughness, maybe that's what they needed. But then they got beat by South Carolina at home handedly. Then they got smoked by Ole Miss. And they lost to Kentucky at home by six. Devo Davis leaves the team. No one knows where he's at. No one knows what's happening. No one gets answers. Uh, okay. What's happened here? I mean, that was what my feeling was like, what happened? How did this happen? How did they get to this point? They're sitting at one and six in conference play. They go on the road to beat Missouri, but who cares? Missouri sucks. Going road and gets smoked by LSU, and it's just like this. This is different. This is so different. Like you're you're not you're not losing. You lose games. Like we've seen Arkansas lose games, but you're getting destroyed in these games. Destroyed by opponents that aren't even that good. LSU is not that good of a team. You got smoked. You beat Georgia at home, great. Tennessee comes to town and just just. Destroys you. Well, they're the best team in the SEC. But then on the road against Mississippi State, you feel like you figured some things out. You start to look a little bit better, a little bit more competent. You still lose, but at least you looked better. Then you go on the road and beat AM. Nice win. You go and beat Missouri handily at home. Nice win. But then you drop one to Vanderbilt, and it's like, wait a minute. I thought this was looking better. You lost by three to Vanderbilt, and then scored 85 points all year long, and he gave up 85. And they go on the road to Kentucky, and 200 and freaking 13 points are scored. You lose that one, but you feel good about it. You beat LSU at home. You have Alabama on the ropes. You have them beat. And you lose in overtime in that. You have Vanderbilt on the You have them beat, and then you go to overtime in that, and you end up winning and then South Carolina. The point is, Going through the whole season <clears throat> is that it was frustrating, it was weird, it was dumb, it was annoying. But here's my take. Sometimes you have seasons like this. Sometimes you have years where it just doesn't it just doesn't work out. And this was definitely one of those years. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but it was. So where do you go? What do you do? 
Well, we'll talk about that. Because there's a lot of things to break down in that. <clears throat> we'll have to talk about it. But folks, before we do, I want to tell you about Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have 401k in your retirement, <clears throat> if you can still have an IRA? I bet you a lot of you don't know. So I sure did. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you the 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts to a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. As I know, uh, we look ahead to the basketball season, or at least the next step of basketball season, and where things are going to play out, and where do they go. Well, first and foremost, what you got to figure out, like right now, is Eric Musselman, is he staying or is he going? I'm hoping he stays. I don't know if he is. I'm not going to predict one way or the other because I'm sure that will go and work poorly for me. But I hope he stays. I really do. And he said after the game and in the press conference how he's, he's never been more motivated than what he is now. He's never been more motivated. And I hope he's, I hope he's right and I hope he's telling the truth. I have no reason to believe he's not. But if that's the case, it could be very bad for whoever gets in Eric Musselman's way next year. Like if, if he is truly saying that he has never been more motivated and he is as serious as it sounds and he is going to be the Arkansas Razorback head coach next year because I know there's been a lot of speculation it'd be stupid to not address the elephant in the room. Like, it's there. It's been moving around. If that's the case, then you could see a completely different team next year in the best of ways. You learn a lot as a coach, and you learn a lot of how things go, and you mean you make mistakes, and you try to correct them. And I'll give Musk credit to this. If you look at the problems from last season that Arkansas had, freshmen, six freshmen on the roster, you had a injury to one of them that couldn't really see the court as much in Nick Smith. You saw Tre Trevor Brazil go down. There was a lot of things that went wrong, but – and a lot of things that Musselman wouldn't do again, but he tried to weather the storm, and they ended up being okay for it, making it to the Sweet 16. And this year, I think that he corrected his approach to everything. He didn't bring in a bunch of freshmen. He had two, Layden Blocker and Bayfall. Bayfall didn't even play much this season. So he went in with experienced guys. He brought in a lot of shooters, too, scorers. Jeremiah Davenport was a really good three-point shooter. Caleb Battle, really good shooter. Uh, you had L. Ellis, who was a really good offensive player at Louisville and showed some signs of it. You had Trevin Brazil coming back. Uh, Tremont Mark, you added from Houston, which was huge because he was an experienced player and uh, was supposedly a lockdown defender. You had Devo coming back, which we know Mark's Devo and how big that was. Like You just saw the things that on paper they looked to be corrected. But it just didn't work out. I think the chemistry, I think the the – way that this team developed together as a group just never clicked. And sometimes you're going to have those years. Sometimes you're going to have those things happen. I hate you know you can call it defense or whatever, and I'm not saying that uh, Muss is free of any sort of blame here, but it's just the truth. So I think that there are going to be plenty of things to fix here this offseason. But what does Muss do? Well, I think he's going to look in a lot more into the chemistry, into the vibes, into the feeling of what he can get out of the transfer portal, as difficult as it may be. I mean, Arkansas kind of has a jump start here. Now that their season's over, he can kind of get into the portal a little bit earlier, a little sooner, and try to develop it that way. So that's helpful. 
But I think they really need to start focusing in on the stuff that mattered the most to Muss and what made them successful. I wanted three-point shooting as much as the next guy. But the bread and butter of a Muss team has always been defense. Really good defense. I mean, that team that was there with uh, J.D. Note, Jalen Williams, Adis Tony, Trey Wade, that was not the most offensively pleasing team. You had Note, who was your guy. Jalen Williams averaged about a double-double. And then on occasion, a Stanley Amude would step up. And But overall, it was a defensive team. In the beginning of the season, they weren't very good at defense, but they settled in, they got it done, and that's how they won games, defense. And that's what I'm hoping that they can kind of get back to. I'll never take it for granted. Because this year, I think offensively, the team started coming together a lot more, but the defense was putrid. The defense was just terrible. The, the lack of effort, the lack of energy, the lack of everything defensively was just bad all around. So I'd really like to see Muss and the team get back to getting great defensive players in there. But who comes back from this team next season? There's some players that can't, like Makai Mitchell can't, Jeremiah Davenport can't, a few others. And the question is also, who do you want back? But if Caleb Battle decided to come back, I wouldn't mind it at all. I'd definitely take Caleb Battle. I, don't, I still don't think he's coming back, but I'd take him. I don't think Trevin Brazil's coming back, but i take him. I know people got frustrated with him, but I still think he's he's got some upside to him. He's got some things he could work on, but I think that he'd still be a player worth having back. But besides that, I don't really know. Like Bay Fall, like he didn't even play this year. You want him back? Are they going to develop? Like what's going to be different about him? I don't know. That's pretty much it. So you're just going to have to go in there, and you're going to have to get guys that can play really good defense. Um, I don't know who your leader is going to be. I don't know, you know what that's going to look like. You know, Is the assistant coaching staff going to stay in place? I don't know. But just get back to what you know, Mus. Just get back to great defense. Get back to getting those players that you can count on and, and, those, and can be coached well with tough coaching. Get those guys back because that's what's going to make you successful, and that's what's going to win you a lot of games this year too. I hope that actually happens, though. Folks, this week's March Madness Bracket Highlights, of course, is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed further than just the rest. Just like any of the 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to make it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as the Armada because this top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there. So no wonder that they're expected to land a top seed in the, big, in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure at shop Nissan and shop NissanUSA.com. We're also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into the existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to have, want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up on all the dates and all the things going on in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. You are Locked On Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, Arkansas baseball is going to get their SEC vibes on this weekend against Missouri at home. And I've liked what we've seen so far from Arkansas. It's hard not to because they're the freaking number one team in the country. So that's nice. But... Uh, I still want to continue to see more. I want to see more of them. I want to see more of what they got going on. I want to see more of their 
the greatness that they have. Uh, you know, everything. Everything going on with them is what I want to see, and I want to see just how it all develops in the direction that it goes. But uh, I still feel like, you know, Stovall coming back is going to be huge. I want to see the starting pitching settle in. Don't ever take Missouri or any team in the SEC lightly. Do not do it. Do not take them lightly. Get after it and get it done. Because to me, that's what's going to make the difference as far as this team setting itself apart and winning the SEC is not feeling yourself too much, not looking at that number one ranking, just looking at everything else surrounding it and make sure you're number one at the end of postseason. That's what matters. Take care of business. You're going to lose some series this year in the SEC. You're going to win some series in the SEC. But at the end of the day, you got to take care of business. you got to get it done. Stay healthy. Stay after it. Settle in. Get guys in scoring position and score them when you are in that position. Help the starting pitching out. Close out games. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. It's going to start up. Missouri, baby. Let's go. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And we're going to have all the coverage right here. So appreciate you all listening into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbor Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. And we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Next Monday, have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you then.